What's up everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. For those who don't know me, my name is Sebastian and today I'm gonna show you how you can recreate this awesome transition that you just saw in the beginning. So this transition is from Ben TK and he used this in his Thailand vlog. So with that being said, jump into DaVinci Resolve and take on that project. <coughs> Alright guys, so we are straight in the edit tab and I just laid out my timeline. This is a still from a manhole cover and the other clip is a drone clip from Trinidad and Tobago. Another YouTuber called Trini Weeks was kind enough to send me this clip to let me use it for my tutorials. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description down below so if you guys want go check him out. He's amazing at drone videography but with that being said let's just jump right into this tutorial and highlight both clips and then right click and create new fusion clip so with that done just go to the fusion page so then go to media in one and hit one on your keyboard and go to media in two and hit two on your keyboard so right now we see that media in one is our drone clip and media in two is our still so let's go to media in one and rename this to stay organized and call this drone and media in two is the man whole cover all right so just move our drone and our merge one out of the way so we got space to work with because we do this step by step and we want to mask out some portions of this still so let's make this view of one media out on viewer 2. So the first step is that we mask out this whole manhole cover. So all that we have left is this concrete street part. So let's go ahead and do this. Go to manhole cover and select the ellipse tool. So by default the ellipse tool is kind of the same size as the manhole cover which is pretty good. But first step is go to the ellipse one. Go to width and type in equals and now this picker comes up and then we just drag it on height so with that being done just hit enter so that means we can control height and this will automatically control the width as well so this number stayed the same so what we want to do now is mask out this complete manhole cover by the way you can also use the polygon tool which will be definitely more accurate but for the sake of this tutorial i'm just stick with the ellipses so right now we have masked out our manhole cover let's hit invert so all that we have left is the concrete street then we go ahead highlight ellipse one and manhole cover and hit command c or control c if you're on a windows pc and then hit command v or control v to paste it then grab a merge and drag this onto this line until it changes color and then let go of it and the merge will automatically be connected so ellipse one will be our inner circle so the concrete part of the manhole cover so now let's go ahead manhole cover underscore one and connect this one to the merge two let's rename ellipse one and call ellipse one the outer circle and call ellipse one underscore one inner circle so with that being done, go to the inner circle ellipse and then just drag this down. Make sure to uncheck invert until we have a pretty good selection of our inner circle. So then Ben TK has this rotating, but also this outer part rotating. So then go to manhole cover and just add a transform node. So we can go ahead and hit command or control V again to paste this one more time and then grab one more merge and drag it onto this line until it changes color and then let go of it. So then connect manhole cover two to the merge three and then go to the ellipse one and just delete it. So the manhole cover underscore two will be our outer part, all the metal part of this manhole cover. So to mask this out, we need two ellipses, one ellipse to cut out all the outer part and one ellipse to cut out this inner part. So let's go ahead, go to manhole cover two and Select the ellipse tool and then with the ellipse tool selected, go in width again and type in equals and then just select this plus and drag it to height. And then we can select the outer part like that. Then go to ellipse one and select another ellipse. This will automatically connect in between the ellipse one and the manhole cover two. Go to ellipse two now and then there you see paint mode and change this to subtract. Then go into width and type in equals and then Put the picker tool onto height again. So now go to ellipse 2 and then put the size down until it matches the inner circle. Probably something like that should work fine. So now that you see 
we got the outer part or the metal part of the manhole cover selected which is pretty fine now we can go ahead highlight both ellipse 1 and ellipse 2 and hit command g or Control g to make it a group and then just rename this to outer circle circle group so with that being done we have masked out pretty much everything that we need so we have, have this outer circle and the manhole cover which is basically just the concrete part. Then we have the inner circle, which is the concrete part of the manhole cover. And then we got this one, which is the metal part of this manhole cover. Just a quick reminder, guys, if you enjoyed today's video, please make sure to hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, please make sure to subscribe to not miss out on any upcoming DaVinci Resolve content. But with that being said, jump back in the Fusion page. So then Banty K used some paint glow effect on there so let's go ahead drag in a background node so then change the color of the background to something neon i stick with magenta and then drag it down and then select another merge merge 4 put it on this line and if it changes color let go of it and then connect the background to the color so now we need a mask paint tool go to background one hit shift spacebar and type in mask paint and then click on add and now go to mask paint click one on your keyboard to see it right there and go to media out and hit two on your keyboard to see what you're working on in the second viewer so now mask paint is set to multi-stroke and we want to change this to polyline stroke go to the top of viewer 2 and there you see the polyline tool and just select this and there the picker comes up so then let's just go ahead and paint whatever you want doesn't matter because most of this will be masked out anyways. So let's say we want to have something like that, but we want to also add more. So then go to mask paint one, hit shift spacebar. So then add another mask paint. So now go ahead and highlight everything from the first mask paint to the last mask paint and hit Ctrl or Command G to make it a group. So then in Benty case video, this was glowing. So then go to background, hit shift spacebar and type in glow, right? Doesn't matter what glow that you want, select that one. And then you can play around with the shine threshold. Just say we leave it as is. So now we're seeing this mask paint the whole time and we don't want this to happen. Then go to merge four, add an ellipse tool, and we can just go ahead and rename this to paint outer circle. So on paint outer circle, go to width and type in equals and then select the picker tool and drag it to height. So with that being done, stay on the paint outer circle and add another ellipse like this. And then ellipse three, F2 again, and name this paint inner circle like that. Then go back to paint outer circle and in the inspector tool up there, you got this pinner. Click this to pin it and then go back to paint inner circle. Now when we are in the inspector tool, we got our inner circle and the outer circle there. So go to the inner circle and there is paint mode merge and just select subtract. Go to width and type in equals and then select the picker tool and drag it on height. So you can move this all together now. And when you drag this in, you see that it is revealing our mask paint. And if you drag it out, it's hiding the mask paint. But we only want our a small part of our masking paint to be visible at a time. So that means if our inner circle is shrinking in, our outer circle have to come right with it, if that makes sense. So we go to the width of our inner circle, double click in there and type in equals once again. Then the picker comes up. And now drag this all the way down to the outer circle width. So now our width from the inner circle is pinned to the width of the outer circle. And now when that is done, the width stays exactly the same and we don't want that. So go in there and type in after the node that you've selected, type in minus 0 0.05 then hit enter. Then go to height in the inner circle and type in equals. Then you get this picker tool and you drag it all the way down to the height of the outer circle. And this is the same thing. Go in there once again and type in minus 0 0.05. 
and hit enter. So now we can control everything with the outer circle part. So go to the outer circle part and drag in the height, drag this down. And you see when you drag this down, only a small part of our painting is visible at a time like that. So this looks kind of sharp. So let's go into our inner circle and give it some soft edges. Not much, just a bit. And do the same thing on outer circle. Give it some soft edges like that. So now when we drag this in or out, this looks like this. But that's pretty cool. So we're pretty much done. One more node after Merge 4, which is our Zoom Transition node. So let's just click on Merge 4 and select the Transform node. And then just rename this one and call it Zoom In. All right, so now we can go ahead and animate everything. So now let's start from our painting. Let's say we want to animate this at frame 10. So let's go to frame 10 and make a keyframe on Paint Outer Circle on height then go forward let's say 15 frames to frame 25 and then just drag it all the way down so now we want the iron part to be rotating so let's go to the outer circle group and the manhole cover 2 and select the uh, another transform node and call this outer circle rotate so now we can go ahead and rotate this metal portion of the manhole cover and now if i do that you see that nothing is moving except this metal part with that being done stay on frame 25 select the keyframe on angle and then go forward 15 frames to frame 40 and then just type in minus 270 degrees so as this is stopping on frame 40 we want the inner part to rotate so let's go to the inner circle and select the transform node, set a keyframe on frame 40 on angle, go forward 15 frames to frame 55 and then just type in 270. And the reason we don't change this to minus 270 is because we want the inner part rotating the other way around as the outer part. But there's still one node missing because we want this inner part, so this inner concrete part of the manhole cover flipping inwards so that it reveals our next shot. So let's go to this transform one, hit shift spacebar and type in DVE and then this DVE node comes up and then just click add. So now on this DVE node we can rotate the Y X and if we do this this is what happens. So now we have to change the pivot and we want to put our pivot onto here somewhere so that this is the bending point of our image. So now with our pivot set all the way to the left, when we now rotate the Y part, this will just drag it in like a door. So now we can set our keyframe on pivot and on Y rotation at frame 55 and then go forward 15 frames to frame 70 and then just drag in this Y rotation all the way like that. That is fine. Once we've done that, we can go to our zoom transition, our zoom transform node, which is the node after merge four. And what we want to do there is stay on frame 70 and then just keyframe the size and then go forward 10 frames and then just drag up all the size all the way. So you're pretty much done. The transition is completed, but we can do some fine adjustment. So now let's add motion blur to our zoom transition. Go to this zoom in, go to the inspector, go to settings and check motion blur. Put this to somewhere around four or five. So now we can add motion blur to all our transform nodes. So let's go into transform one, go to settings and check motion blur. And then probably around four or five, go to the outer circle, rotate, go to settings and check motion blur as well. And then go to probably around five, but we also can add motion blur on the DVE node. So let's go to the DVE node, go to settings, check motion blur, and then probably around four is fine. But there are still minor adjustments that we can do. So now go to the zoom in transition node, check the spline window. And then first thing is deselect everything that is selected by default. So now start at the beginning and then there is our outer circle rotate. Check this, zoom to fit, highlight both nodes, hit S on your keyboard to smoothen them out. Deselect this, 
then go down and zoom in. This is our transition. So now check this, zoom to fit, hit S to smoothen them out and go down, transform one. This is, I forgot to rename this. This is the inner circle rotate. So now check this, select both, hit S, go down once again, go to your DVE node, zoom to fit, select them both and hit S to smoothen them out. And now you're pretty much done. And when you're done, go back to the edit page, set the render cage fusion output on on, and then go to playback, render cage on smart, and this will automatically render out this clip. And once this is rendered, we will watch it back. So that's pretty cool and pretty unique. And once you've got the hang of it, like how the fusion nodes work, this is pretty simple to recreate. So that is all I got for now. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, please consider leaving a like and a subscribe if you haven't already. But also if you recreate this transition, please make sure to somehow send it to me so I can see what you came up with. So with that being said, hope you have a great day. See you in the next one. Bye.